Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson on how can I be organized to be more successful? Uh, that is our essential question for today's lesson. Uh, it will be a brief lesson. It's something that's extremely important to do at the beginning of a new school year, at the beginning of a new semester. And it's just a brief overview of why organization is important and a checklist of things you should do to be organized in class. So with that, let's move on and talk about two things. First of all, how can you organize your notebook? And second of all, how can you organize your notes? First lesson is about why is organizing my notebook important? And just as a general statement, if your notes are not organized, you're not going to be very successful because you're not going to be able to use your notes. So it's important to keep in mind that the purpose of a notebook is to organize your notes and class activities in a way that helps you study and learn. If all you are doing is taking notes because the teacher requires you to take notes and you don't ever use them, there is basically no point to taking those notes. I want you to think about that for a minute. That taking notes is not jumping through a hoop to take, make the teacher happy. Taking notes is to help you. If you are not taking them in a way that will help you, you are not going to be successful. In fact, a lack of neatness and organization makes studying more difficult, if not impossible. So it's important to have your notes organized so that you can actually study and be successful. So the first thing you want to do, and we'll be doing this today in all likelihood, is having an accurate and detailed table of contents so you can find specific topics in your notes. If you're constantly thumbing through your notebook and trying to find what it is you're looking for, that's going to be frustrating and it's also going to not be an efficient use of your time. The table of contents is there to help you flip to the correct pages when you need to find information. Also, you want to use Cornell Notes because those Cornell Notes are going to help you make the information in your notes organized and interactive and are going to make those notes a lot easier to study. And uh, since you are attending Waldo Middle School and we are an avid school and Cornell Notes are simply part of the air we breathe, uh, you should be well versed in how to use Cornell Notes uh, when you attend this educational institution and definitely if you are in my class. So we're going to be practicing our notebook organization by setting up our interactive notebooks and we will be using Cornell Notes constantly in this class. So since we're talking about Cornell Notes, uh, here is a slide that's going to show you Cornell Notes and how they are to be used. Uh, over here you'll have a sheet of Cornell paper uh, and many times you will get the paper loose leaf and it will look very much like this and other times we will expect you to take those notes in your actual notebook. So let's, let's describe quickly what Cornell notes are. First of all, Cornell notes are a systematic way of writing down, organizing, and reviewing information. So the key word there is system. If you have a system, your chances of being more successful are much higher. There are four sections to Cornell Notes, and I'm going to briefly give you an overview of those and point them out on the page to the right and describe to you what it is that should go in each of those sections. First of all, we have what I call the title or the essential question. So this section right here is where you are going to write the essential question for the notes, which is like a title, but it's better than a title because it asks a question and then you know that all of your notes are going to answer that question. So if you're reading the heading of a book, turn that heading into a question. Is it a who, what, where, when, or why? And then you write the question across the top as the essential question. And that will tell you what all the notes are about. If you want to do a briefer title, there's also this little section here on the preformatted Avid paper. Second thing you're going to do is write guiding questions and subtopics on the left. So this area here is for you to turn subheadings in your chapter into questions. So again, if you run across a subheading, 
ask yourself, is this is a who, what, when, where, how, or why question. Turn it into a question, and then all of the bullet points you put on the right will then become answers to that question. So it's brilliant. This is the area for summary statements. This is the meat of your notes. Um, this is where you're going to basically put the answers to the questions. And I always say, please leave space in between your notes so you can actually read them. So leave one line of space between each note that you take. Yes, it will require you to use more paper, but it will also be something that's a lot easier for you to read. So this is where you write summary statements, terms, people, dates, and key points. And this is the one time where teachers will tell you you don't have to use complete sentences. If you're writing complete sentences in your Cornell notes, you're writing too much, it's taking too much of your time, and you're not getting to the gist of what the information is. All you want are brief summary statements, and you can put them into your own words. So for instance, in my class, if I'm giving a Google Slides presentation, uh, you are able to put those notes into your own words, even though when I create the presentations in the first place, I do try to make it so that the notes are fairly brief because I basically design my presentations in Cornell format. And then at the bottom, you always want to write a summary of your notes. And I always say that a good guiding principle to write a summary of your notes is for each left side question you have in your notes, you want to answer it in one sentence in your summary. And for the most part, that works really well. There are times when it doesn't, but if you need a guiding light or a guiding principle to help you to write a summary, just remember one sentence for each left side question. Another thing you need to realize is taking your notes is only the first step. It is not jumping through a hoop. If all you do is take your notes and turn them in and you never use them, they're pointless. You need to go back and review them more than one time. We call that getting repetitions, or as Mr. Larios likes to say, getting your reps in. You got to look at them more than once. And in class, whenever we have extra time, I am going to make it a, a point to give you those repetitions with your notes so that you are actually able to learn and retain the information more. You also need to mark up your notes. You need to highlight key phrases and circle keywords in your notes. So I'm going to be passing out highlighters and I'm going to tell you to circle. And I'm not going to have you do that the day we take our notes. I'm going to have you do that the next day because that's going to force you to get a repetition with those notes. And by being forced to get a repetition with those notes, you're actually going to have a stronger chance of remembering what's actually in them. So remember, you need to review your notes at least twice after taking them and perhaps in the evening after taking them or even the next day. Um, since we're going to be requiring you to have your notebooks actually in your binders, uh, reviewing them in the evening is not an unrealistic expectation. So, With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end this first lesson. Um, it's a basic lesson. It's a short lesson on organization and I'm going to leave it on YouTube so that you can refer back to it uh, when needed uh, especially if it involves reviewing Cornell notes so with that however this is going to be Mr. Blumendahl signing off from the Waldo Middle School YouTube channel and we'll catch you next time